So in the previous part, we had seen these uh, smart cards producing very patterned primes. Now, we don't find all the primes with the patterns. I mean, we found lots of primes with doing the GCDs, and so we can inspect all the prime factors that we found there, and some of these moduli we have that one prime is patterned and the other one is not patterned. Uh, but we also find these two primes, which, well, look very, very patterned. They're almost like the prime from the all zero bit, bit pattern, except for, well, there's a bit flipped here or a bit flipped there. And then, well, finding the next prime out after this causes the bottom bits to be different from the 2F9 prime. So these came up from the GCDs. We didn't find them when we, well, took the patterns and then ran with it. So how can we find such primes? I mean, these are certainly not good primes. These are certainly findable. And you feel like, okay, fine, you could just do trial division by trying kind of the old zero and then modifying something here. So if you're doing like six bits at the bottom, it's two to the six, so 64 different trials. It's not so much and only, well, however many of those are primes. So yes, you could go with trial division for quite a distance. What I actually want to show you is a more powerful method due to Don Coppersmith. Um, and well, our speculation of what happened here is that it was basically the RNG was not working, was outputting all zeros, and eventually started kind of waking up, stuttering a little bit when it came to generating the last chunks here. But most of what could have happened here was then overwritten by finding the next prime. And so, well, it is still mostly zero. So these are not good primes, and they should be findable. Now, Coppersmith method finds roots of polynomials mod n. Keep in mind that I've proven for you that computing square roots mod n is hard, is as hard as factoring. Now we're looking here at polynomials mod n where n is an RSA module, so we don't know how to factor n. And for the simplest polynomial, for the polynomial x squared minus c, where we would like to compute a square root of c, we do not know how to do this mod n. Now Coppersmith method is able to compute roots model n, uh, assuming that those roots are small, small in, in absolute value. So if you have a root small, a small root here of this polynomial, say we're looking at the prime p has this form, a known part a and then some unknown part a, uh, r. And so we can write this as polynomial f of x, which is x uh, a plus x, and then this r plays the role of x. So this would be a small root if r in this prime p is small. So for instance, if we look at a being a bit pattern and then r just this, this bottom part, this is an integer to account for while well, making it prime, that's just affecting the very last bits, and then also maybe some bit errors appearing in the last part. And last part for Coppersmith method is actually not so small. I'm going to show you an example in a moment where it's a third of the length of p. So roughly p to the one third is the size of r. So this would capture all r's which are up to one third and then well a is a bit pattern for the top part. The way the Coppersmith method is working is that we come up with such a polynomial. So well done, here it is. So a is our bit pattern, x is the one we want to find and then we know that this polynomial has a solution mod p. Namely, well, it is equal to p at that point. Um, there's an algorithm called LL, and what this algorithm takes as an input is a matrix. And this matrix is going to be built from the coefficients of this polynomial, and of course also from n running around. And then the uh, Coppersmith method says, okay, we run this LL algorithm, it will output new polynomials, or it actually will output new rows, new vectors, and we interpret them as polynomials, such that, well, we're giving a new polynomial which also has r as a root. So the same r here, that is a root of f, is also a root of this polynomial g. And it is a root of the polynomial g, not just mod n, but over the integers. Okay, factoring or computing roots mod n is hard, but computing polynomials over the integers is easy. So if you look at a number and you know the number is like x cubed, it's an integer x cubed, then you know how to find 
the cube root of that while receiving 8, and you know that the number was 2. So then you're getting a whole bunch of roots, or typically it's just one of them being an integer. For those roots, you're testing whether a plus this root can be p, so whether a plus this root is a divisor of n. And if so, well, you factored in. Congratulations, you're done. Um, in this lecture, I'm going to treat the LLL algorithm as a black box. Also, this Coppersmith method, the way it works, when it works, for this lecture is a black box, and the next lecture at least going to show you the conditions of when it works. Okay, so to find such a root, here is how we build this matrix. So one thing you need to know is an upper bound on this error term. And I said already, we're going to look at up to a third of the bit length of p. So our x is going to be basically p to the one third. Well, I'm going to choose 160 bits rather than exactly 512 divided by 3. I wanted a nice integer bound. And then we build a matrix. Now, the top row here, well, let me start at the bottom. So the bottom polynomial, you have to read this as the constant. This is x to the 1. This is x to the 2. Now, this polynomial f of x here, that would be a as a constant and the coefficient is 1. It looks like this row, a is a constant, uh, but the coefficient is x here. So I'm actually evaluating this polynomial not at lowercase x, but at capital X times x squared. Capital X is this bound on R. Okay, so then this has coefficients. Well, it's a plus capital X lowercase x, so the coefficient there is capital X. That's the x times x term. And then the next polynomial I'm looking at is this one. So it's the same problem as before, multiplied by uppercase x, lowercase x. And so, okay, we're getting an uppercase x squared here, and we're getting an uppercase x a. It's just this row shifted by 1 and with an extra x up here. Okay, so we're taking this matrix, we run LLL, it's called a lattice basis reduction algorithm. What it does is it does uh, linear combinations of these rows. Now, each of these rows is 0 mod p for the right value r. So n, well, is a multiple of p anyway. When we replace x, lowercase x, by r, then x, uh, r plus a is p. And also in the upper one, well, it's just x times this. So also there, it's r times p, so that's also 0 mod p. Well, then any combination of those will also be 0 mod p. The uppercase x at this moment are kind of a artificial thing. The next lecture will explain why we have to stuff them in. In the end, what they do is they kind of make every piece be about of equal size. Okay, and then we look at the shortest vector of these, which will be the first row. Um, we're looking at this as a coefficients of a polynomial. Again, with the same interpretation, this is the x to the 0, this is x to the 1, this is x to the 2. And, well, this is a polynomial in uppercase x, lowercase x, with these coefficients. But then we divide, basically, by uppercase x. We're looking at this as a polynomial, just g of x. And for that, we're looking for integer roots. And, okay, well, for each of those integer roots, we test whether we found a factor of p. I guess this is easy with an example. So let's look at an example. So here, um, again, doing 512-bit primes, just because this matches the example we're doing. We're multiplying p times q, so that's nothing interesting there. And then let's assume we know everything except for the bottom 160 bits. So instead of having these patterns of zeros and ones, or the all zero pattern you have seen before, well, for these totally random primes, or, a, well, as good as sage primes are, as it's not a cryptographic random number generator, it actually has some reproducibility, so don't use this for generating your keys. Um, well, the known part is p except for the bottom 160 bits. So I know this top part, and I don't know what is here. So I've just blanked those out. Okay, so that plays the role of my a, or in the smart card attack, that plays the role of the bit pattern. And make sure to shift your bit patterns to the right power of 2 there. Good. Then we build this matrix. Oh yeah, first of all, I have now a bound. 
I don't know the bottom 160 bits, so my bound on the R is to the 160. And then the matrix, well, that was the x squared, x times a, 0, and then the normal polynomial. So this was a polynomial shifted by x, this was a normal polynomial, and this is just the end from up there. And then Sage has an implementation of LL. This is why I suggest at the beginning of the semester that you get a bit familiarized with Sage because this has a very convenient implementation. There are several standalone implementations of LL, and if you have a different computer algebra system, you can maybe also find it, for instance, Harry GP has it as well, but I don't know whether Mathematica has it. Anyway, Sage has it, and so then this B is another matrix which now has, well, all these vectors, and then the first one, let's look at this one as a polynomial. So we're taking the 0, 0 entry, and that times the highest polynomial, the next one times the next, well, x squared, x, and constant, and I'm already dividing by the right powers of uppercase x. So this is already doing the two steps, so first setting up this polynomial g, and then I'm uh, g of xx, and this is now the g of x. So that's what this q stands for. And then I'm asking Sage to give me all the roots of it. So per se, this is a quadratic polynomial. So I could imagine I would get two roots of it, but actually it's only one of these, which is an integer root. Okay, so here is my candidate R. And then I'm asking Sage whether A plus R is actually equal to the prime. And Sage says, yes, it is. So you can try this yourself. Of course, when you get to the hexadecimal here, you will see your own value. When you get to the roots here, you will see your own value, value but everything else is the same. So this works smoothly up to about a third of the length of P. I'll show you in the next lecture where the one-third comes from. Um, you could actually push this a bit further um, with different matrices, but it gets slower and slower. Okay, so we did this. Um, we ran this on all of the 164 different bit patterns, and it took about one hour per pattern, because, well, you have to run through a whole bunch of stuff there. In fact, 160 keys. That's more than I had before, including there were 39 which were not factored. So these, again, came from patterns that, well, matched these, these random things, but then more bottom bits were different. And from the keys that we had found with the GCD method, we essentially found all of them in the end. Well, not a surprise, because most of those were really bad primes. So there were just two of those keys which had better primes. Okay, so... Those had a different bit pattern, so don't didn't start with C, but started with E. And so we're thinking, well, what are the chances that there are more keys which start with E, something, something, something? But actually, no, we didn't find more. So that was just two odd ones out. We don't know where they came from. Coppersmiths can actually do more errors. I mentioned this already. You can go up to P to the one half, um, but you have to increase the number of rows you're doing. So if you want to go to, well, not p to the one, uh, to, instead of p to the one-third, so n to the one-sixth, you want to go to n to the one-fifth, you have to do um, five rows, and so each time your LL will get slower and slower. Um, we also have a generalization of this, um, which can handle multiple blocks of errors. I mean, you have to say where you want the next block to be, but you can shift those around. You can say, okay, I'm accepting top bits being different and bottom bits being different, or some block here and so on. And so we found more primes. So if you want to see the full story, uh, we have a web page up at smartfacts.tr.yp.to where you can actually get all the technical details and also see how this other method works. So this is everything I want to say on how the fun worked. The next lecture will give all the gory details.